you cut the head off one and 10 grow back. This Sakara, the exemplary deck, just outweighs any sort of Hydra deck you could possibly think of. Hi, I'm Paul and welcome to the first rule of Nerd Club. Today, we're going to be doing a deck tech on Sakara the Exemplary. It is a legendary creature, Nightmare Hydra. Hydra, always good. So, it is a bit, a bit of ramp, so it's got add two mana of any color. It's also got death touch, so obviously people don't really want it to block. And then whenever you cast a spell with X in the mana, you create a zero zero green Hydra creature token with X plus one plus one counters on it. Now that is awesome. With these videos, what I want to do is teach you how I make the decks, so then you can go away and maybe create your own from the commander. But obviously, my decks are going to be in the description below, so if you just wanted to use mine and test them out, that is perfectly fine. But I want to give you the tools to make your own decks. Before anything, there is three rules of Nerd Club. The first rule, it needs to be fun. It needs to be budget friendly. I try and range between $50 and $70 and it needs to win. The second rule of Nerd Club is we don't want to waste money. So we proxy the deck first and then we play it and then we buy the cards. And the third rule of Nerd Club, there's no apologies. There's no wimping out. We're playing to win. So without further ado, let's get into the deck tech. So there's actually two decks that I ended up creating one of them I played, and I didn't actually like the feel, so I ended up making a second deck. This is why I say proxy the deck first. But before anything, what we want to do is we go on to Moxfield to create a new deck. So we go new deck, we'll just name it Zar for now. The commander is... Let's see if it comes over. There we go. Zagara the Exemplary. Then we want it private because people don't want to see this until it's perfected. Then we create the deck. Here we have it. Now, what I try and do is put in the lands first so we don't put in too many and then end up needing to take too many out. With this deck, I actually started off with 310 cards that had to whittle down to 100. It was just ridiculous, just because, oh, that's good, oh, that's good, oh, that's good. And then before I knew it, it was just like, oh, now I've got to get through it all. So we'll try and, you know, not do that. So first of all, we want to put lands in, just so then we know how many get. So generally, I try and put 36. I'll just put 36 on oh, Swamp. There we go. There we go. Now we've got 37 in our stack. So now, what I generally try and do is go to EDH rec first to see if there's any combos with the deck. Now, I do have it up here, but for some reason the combos aren't coming up. So with uh, Zakara the Exemplary, there is a couple of cards that are just amazing. So what they generally do is, if I can get it up, what happens is, is it creates unlimited mana, so infinite mana. So you go down to enchantment, so you've got freed from the real, this one here. So what you do is you attach that onto it, and then you can create two mana from your commander. So you attach this onto it, and obviously you pay the one. You uh, untap the creature when you tap it for mana, and then it can tap again for mana, and untap, and untap, and untap. There you go. There's also another one here, which is the... Uh, Penmin's Aura. So basically it does exactly the same thing, it's just over double the price. So if you wanted to put both of them in, you can do. So both of these enchantments are a good place to start because they're obviously going to give us infinite mana, which is going to win us the game. So we come onto here, and as you can see they're both there. So what you do is just copy them, you come over to your Moxfield, Bulk Edit, and then all you have to do is just paste them in here. Then you save it. And there you go. You've got them in the deck. So we know now we've got unlimited mana if we can get them on the cards. Now, there was a couple of ways you could do this. So one of the ways that I created was to have loads of Hydra creatures. So that was, let me have a look, was it this one? 
Yeah, so that was this one. So there were 25 creatures. The way I went about it was having Hydra creatures where they had X mana, because obviously we want to play X spells, because once again, the commander says, whenever you cast a spell with X in the mana, create a 0, zero green Hydra creature token. Put X 1-1 one, one counters on it. So if we're creating these Hydras, so say we'll go for this one, Worldwood Scourge. What we want to do then is obviously make Hydras as big as possible. So once we create that Hydra, say if we paid 5 in its mana, then we'd create a 5-5 five, five Hydra creature as well. So this is the route I went down first. So as you can see there's creatures and I've tagged everything so if you, it's just better because if you tag the cards that you're actually putting into the deck you kind of know what the basics are and how to you know if you need more draw if you need more removal or if you need extra you know things that are going to win you the game so I tried to tag all my decks so as you see look there's eight board wipes or target removals so you see look obviously you can pay X, remove target. This one here, look, your target creature gets plus it, minus X, minus X, so obviously that's a target removal. Uh, remove X, one, one counts from one creature to control, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. Obviously, we're going to have loads of one, one counters on our creatures, so that's perfect. Bit of a beast within, who doesn't love that? Then we've got counter spells. Got five count spells just to make sure our commander stays on the board. We also want to keep that enchantment on the commander so we can keep infinite mana. Now, how do I get all these cards to this stage? And which cards do I pick? So first of all, what you could do is go to YouTube. Then what you do is you go onto the obviously the videos. You can watch them on how they like make the decks. Or, what you could do is you come down, generally most of them, if you go into show more, they will have their deck lists. You click on the deck list and you think, okay, what have they got in their decks? Because sometimes you haven't got a clue what to put in it. Like, I'm quite new to the um, commander format and thinking about what cards to go in what. I just haven't got a clue. So what I do is help myself by going up to other people's decks. Now look, he's got his here. So what you're gonna do is just have a look. Oh yeah, that one's good, that one's good. Okay, so this is a good card. So say you want to put this into your deck. What you do is you go onto your deck again and then put Hungering Hydra. Click this. And there we go, it is now in your deck. Now you want to do that on as many as you possibly can in YouTube. So what I try and do is go back and I just try and watch a few of the videos, look at some more, go, okay, I'll look at this. Maybe watch the video if you've got time, just so then you know how they play the cards. And once again, you come down here, it's got the deck list, once again, look. So this person actually got a mox fill, which is a lot better, in my personal opinion. Computer's taking ages. And once you go again, look, it just shows you everything he's got. Creatures, sorceries, artifacts, what's good. So, oh, whenever an opponent plays a land, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Awesome. Dublin season, that's if you want to double everything. Some of these may seem expensive, so what you could do is you can go to view, visual grid, price, price. In fact, we'll keep it as text. And then you press save, and then it shows you there, look, the price of every single card. Now, we're trying to make this budget, we're trying to keep it between $50 and $70. So, if you think about it, and you put in Sevilna Heart of the Wilds, that's $22 on one card. Yes, it is a very good card, but you're not going to be able to put much more of other things in. So, you've got to keep that into mind on what you want to do. So, you want to go through that. That's how I do it through YouTube. I just go there through, through a few videos, find a few cards, and then add them to my commander. Then I also... Once I have got my deck and I've got a fair few cards, I'm like, right, okay, Moxfield, what are you going to show me? Because I want to see more decks. 
So we come down to the bottom of the page, and as you can see, look, other people have made decks. So you go to the Zakari, the exemplary, and we want to see what other people have done. So what we want to do is we want to go to the most views. Because if they've got the most views, generally they are the better decks. So this person's got 32,000 views, I think it was. They have 32,000 views. Hmm. CEDH. Now, CEDH is a whole new different ball game, but they can get a good, good basics of it. So this person here has gone for just loads of ramp. As you can see, look, ramp, 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 ramp. Uh, creatures, well, that's good, can't be countered, so that's always good to add in. So that's, that's, you can see the sort of route he's gone down for, all the cheap creatures coming in. And then what else has he got down here? So has he got X spells? No. Okay, so, um, I think he, all he's gone for is just to make sure you get unlimited mana. And there must be other combos that he's chosen. So, not quite the tactic that we want to go for. But obviously, if you want the ramp, then you can obviously get them, copy me into your deck, and hey, presto. So then, as you see, we go on to our cards. And then once we've got it, we whittle it down to 100 of how we want to play the deck. As I said, this one here was more the creature base, the hydras getting plus uh, X's, so you end up getting loads of creatures like that. Obviously, there is... Other cards like this, which gives us X. So it doesn't matter if it's a creature spell or a sorcery or an instant. As long as it's X in the mana, we get a massive Hydra. No one here, draw X. So there was quite a few. So we ended up getting how many creatures? 25. 25 creatures. We went for about 15 draw because we want to try and get through to our creatures. That was good. Then we want a bit of equipment, a bit of protection for our commander, so that we've got the mask of Avancy and Swift Foot Boots, because we want to keep the commander on board as much as possible. Now, flavors. I have these tags on all my decks. Flavor just generally means help towards you know the end goal of what the deck is supposed to do so dusk shell crawler it gives all our creatures with one one counters on it trample so obviously pretty much all our creatures are gonna have one one counters on it because the hydras were one counters on it same as this one gives them trample this each creature gets put an extra plus one plus one this one here if one more counters would be put on a creature you twice that many one one counters on it instead awesome so if you can bring out hydra say if it's got six on it That'll be 12 instantly. So, obviously, we, at the start, until we can get our card on our commander so we can get an unlimited mana, if we buy a Hydra, basically, we want to use all our mana to get as big as possible. If we've got this, then at the beginning of our end step, it untaps all our lands. So then, hopefully, if anyone casts a spell to get rid of one of our key opponents, we can counter it because we've got the mana open. Bit of graveyard recursion just in case anything that we need has gone into our graveyard we can bring it back because obviously that's <laughs> we don't want it gone forever i've ended up with 34 lands because i found that was the best for this uh, a bit of life gain just in case we get down too far then we've got a bit of looks to search so what we're trying to do is we're trying to find our best pieces so what we want to do is find obviously the the, the key components, like our enchantment, that gives us maximum, uh, oh, sorry, gives us unlimited mana. Uh, we've only got three mana rocks because we've got so much ramp in the deck. And we've got a bit of protection again, look. So this one here, look, if you remove a 1-1 one -one counter from it, prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn to another target creature with a 1-1 one -one counter on it. So, that's always good. Same as this one, uh, you sacrifice your creatures you control with counters on it, they gain hexproof and indestructible. We want to keep our stuff on the board so we can kill everyone. That's the whole point. So let's say we've got 14 Rampler, which isn't, like, which isn't, you know, a, a lot, a lot, but it's a fair deal, so we wanted to get out as much mana as we can. 
so we can obviously play our X spells even if we didn't have the unlimited mana. So we've got our secondary wink on and our main wink on. Our main wink on is getting this freed from the real on our commander. As soon as we've got that on our commander, we've got unlimited mana, and then we can make one creature, which is just gonna be massive, which is unlimited X plus X. Then what we wanna do is put this dragon throne Kari on it. So basically it's an equipment that, uh, well, that once you attach it to a creature it gets defender but we're not bothered about that because what we want is its ability. So you pay two and you tap it and then other creatures you control gain trample and plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the creature's power. Now if the creature is unlimited so you've literally maxed it out because you've got your freed from the real on it all other creatures are going to be exactly the same and they've got trample. So as long as you've got three creatures on the board and they can attack then the other three opponents, they're dead because they can't be able to block it because of the trample. Then this one here is also good, bit of a wink on. So you have all these massive hydras and you want to give them flying. Let's <laughs> say so this is help. Obviously this one as well because it helps towards giving them trample. Same as uh, Garuk's Uprising, great draw. Um, it's got great trample on it. It's just ways obviously to make sure that they've got trample and you can get the damage through and you can kill them. Now, secondary wing cons. The first one is this. So what you could do is you could target one player and that player loses X life. So obviously you've got unlimited mana because they're freed from the real. That person's dead, basically. Then the bottom one says up to X target creatures gain fear until end of turn. So they can't be blocked except by artifact creatures or black creatures. You want to kill the person who is playing black cards because at the end of the day they can still block. Get rid of them, then you use the second one, and then not if, if, if no one else is playing black or artifact creatures, you can just swing all your creatures and kill them straight away. Then there is this. This is a good little card. So basically Simic Ascent Ascendancy, I think it's called. So whenever one or more 1-1 one, one counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic. That's awesome. We're making loads of creatures with 1-1 one, one counters on it. Then it says at the beginning of your keep, if it has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. So if you can get that out one turn, and then the following turn, if you decide to play this, that's his intervention. So basically you look at the top X cards in the library and put two of them in, but we're not really that bothered about that. All we care about is it's got instant and it's an X spell. So what we do is we play this on the person's end step which then we end up creating a Hydra because of our commander. And then when it comes up to upkeep, we've put all them counters on the Simic and hey presto, we've won the game. Or if you wanted to do it this way, where it's just through battle, we could do is destroy all of the creatures you don't control and plane walkers and you just swing everything at everyone and kill everyone that way. So there's a few different ways. This does help, but it, it depends if you can keep them on your Simic until the following turn. So this is like a backup plan. What you do is you pay, obviously, the mana, and say if you've got like 50 cards in your deck left, that goes on the Simic because you've created a 50 Hydra creature, but it's trying to keep that Simic ascendancy around until you're following upkeep, which can be a bit of a pain if you don't have any counter spells. So that one there is a bit, bit more tricky, but it's a good way to win if you feel like you know, you're not going to be able to get the damage through it or if it's a bit far away from winning with this uh, Dragon Throne or just getting massive trample creatures. Then, the second deck. So, I played that first deck and it just didn't play how I wanted it to play. Like, it was good, but not good enough. So, I had to go back to the drawing board and once again, I had ended up with like nearly 200 cards that I had to whittle down from, and yeah. But this deck here, I actually prefer it a lot more than the other one. As you can see, there is a lot less creatures. So there is only 10 creatures, but creatures are for if you're casting spells. So this one here, whenever you cast a spell, uh, or an instant, or sorcery, you draw a card. Then this one is whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell. Tower Round Sky Summoner. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, create a 2 2 blue Drake creature token with flying. So, not only are you getting the benefits of the Hydras, you're also getting these extra tokens that will just give you a little bit of a chump block just in case anyone attacks while we're trying to build a board state. 
The reason I've gone for less creatures in this deck is because I wanted way more spells. Because at the end of the day, I wanted to interact with people. With the other deck, I felt like you couldn't really interact because you were spending so much mana on getting Hydras out, and then you were left with pretty much no mana, and you're like, oh well, I can't really do anything that I wanted to do. Whereas this here, you get a couple of creatures out that can just chump block at the start, and then while you're building up, playing the spells, you can start to bring out more and more Hydras. Okay, so now what we do is we go to the tags. And then we can see, this is why I tag every deck, just so we can see what we've got in it. So we've got 12 board weight slash target removals. Because we want to interact. Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana X or less. So that's a good board wipe. Not only will you clear everyone else, you'll be able to build a massive Hydra in one go. Awesome. Same as this one, Curse of the Swine. If you've got unlimited mana, you can get rid of everyone's board state and then you can attack yourself. This one here is good, you can search your library. But it also deals twice X damage to each creature with flying. So if you know you're playing a dragon's deck, always good to get rid of dragons, because they can be a pain. Then, this one's got more counter spells. I just felt like this deck needed a few more counter spells in it. Then, we go to creature tokens, obviously the creatures, and then we've got 12 different draws in here. Where if you sacrifice a creature lot, if you've got a massive creature, say it's like a 12-12, sacrifice that, you get to draw cards equal to its power. 12 cards, plus 12 life, you're in a good position. And in that 12, you may be able to find the win conditions. Got a bit of protection there again. Now, a bit of flavour. So because we're playing so many sorceries, we need a way of getting them out fast. We want to be able to cast our sorcery spells at uh, instant speed. So that's why I've put this in the deck. Uh, Ley line of Anticipation. If it is in your open hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. You may cast spells as though they had flash, which is exactly what we need if we're casting loads of sorceries. Swarm Intelligence. Awesome card. If we play one, it says you may cast an instant, whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, you may copy that spell, you may choose a new target. So, not only are we getting one spell that can end up having X in it and getting one Hydra, we're getting two because we're playing two spells, which is just going to be absolutely awesome. We'll end up with a massive board state really fast. Now a bit of graveyard cur recursion again, just in case. Went 34, 34 lands again. So obviously we want to look for our pieces. So we've got a good bit of good bit of search. These are like the cheap versions. Can you get like like I don't know, I can't remember the names of them now, but you can get Diabolic Chooser thing, things like that where you search for the cards, but they are expensive. So because we want budget, we go for these. And because we actually only need a card that's three mana, these Demir uh Manchin yeah. And this one here and this one here are very good because they transmutate, which means you just play the, that cost and you go to search your library for something for three mana. Well, the card that we want, that's going to give us unlimited mana, is a three mana card, so that's perfect. Okay, so a bit of opponent hate. Obviously, if we want to <laughs> cause some trouble, then we've got some opponent hate, which leads us down to... Uh, ramp again, got 14 ramp, pretty much like last time. We want to try and get as much mana as we can. This card's pretty good. So basic lands, you control half tap. They get two colorless, basically. Spend only to play X card. So if you've got, obviously, three basics out, you, you're looking pretty sweet for these X spells anyway. So we want to go for the first win com. As you can see, it literally is just the enchantment. As soon as you get that on your commander, you can then bring out these X spells and make massive creatures and just attack and just win by damage. Now, I actually prefer the secondary win cons in this deck, that and I've actually won by these. This is why I enjoy these better than what I do the you know the battle in and I think that's why I prefer this deck. So same as the previous deck, you could Target, so say you've got these in your hands, you've got unlimited mana, say you've got, let me have a look, say you've got these two in your hand, so you've got the increasing confusion, 
So basically, target player puts X cards of his library uh, into his graveyard, which is great. So you do that, you literally mill them out, they put them into the graveyard. And then once your card goes into the graveyard, you play the flashback cost. And because you've got unlimited mana, you can literally get rid of two people in one swing. Then if you had uh, profane command, you could then target the last player and they lose X life. Bingo about a bosh, done. Three people dead in one swing. Now, this card's also amazing. Villainous Wealth. So, target opponent exiles X cards from the library. You may cast any number of spells with converted mana X or less from among them without paying the mana cost. So you pick a deck, you think, you know what, that deck looks really good, it's got some good creatures in it. You can exile all your cards from your deck, you pick out every single last one of them cards that you think is awesome, put them on your board, and if you've got some of that in their deck that gives them haste, you can go and smash them, and you can kill everyone else with that other person's stuff. It's just awesome, I love that. Once again, a uh, target player draws X cards and loses X life, and then you've also got the Simic Ascendancy and the uh, Body Research. This time, this works even better because you've got the card that allows Sorceries to play instant speed. So if you've got that out, you play the Simic Ascendancy the turn before, and then you can just play Body of Research on the end of someone's end step, and hey presto, you create a creature which then puts it straight onto the Simic Ascendancy, and then you win the game like that. Okay, so once you think you've got all the cards that you want, Make sure you come up to this by deck, so then you can see how much it is. So we're keeping it budget, so if you go to TGC Player, it says roughly about $64.23, which is in our price range of $50 to $70. Now, if you're in the UK, you can go to the card market, where I get my cards from, and put all the details in there and buy the cards. Now, once you've got all your cards, rule number two, you proxy the cards first. We don't want to waste money. So you can go out and go to TGC, play or whatever card market and spend 60 odd pound or dollars on cards. Get down, sit down, play it, and be like, oh, this deck doesn't play how I want it to play. I don't like this deck. And then what's happened? You've wasted money. Well, you could have just proxied it and played it for a few games first, like I did, found out that it wasn't my play style, so I changed the deck. Then I played it and thought, yeah, this is awesome. So what I do then is, Go onto this bulk and then select all. But because I have made them into tags, it can be a little bit of a pain. This is definitely the best at proxy side that I've found. As you can see, I've put a few in here because what happens is if you've tagged them and you put them into here, it's got all the tags as well. So you have to delete them off. So I put a few in. I put a few in and got these three cards here. I clicked on download. You can set A4 in centimeters, put a line on it so you can see where you're cutting. You press download and then you've got it here. You just send it to the printer where you want it to go and then you've got it. What I generally do is I've got the sleeves and I put old cards in that obviously I don't use and they're not very good. They're just rubbish commons or uncommons. Then I put the piece of paper in front, so then you've obviously got it how it should be. Because if you've got just paper in it, you just can't you can't shuffle it or anything. You need the card behind to make it sturdy. What you could do as well is if you before that stage is you could go to combos. So you put all your cards into the combo section, and then obviously you find if there's any combos that you would want to put in it, or if there's combos that you think, you know what, I don't want to put that in it, then you can take them out. It, it's just it's just a good site to have so then you know there's other combos other than the ones that I've obviously just said There's my Zakara, the exemplary as you can see that's how I do it rule number three remember there's no apologies there's no bitching out you're there to win stop worrying about what other people think go to the game play it win the game hey presto check the description below there is my patron link Supporting the channel would be absolutely amazing so I can bring more content like this and bring out, obviously, more decks. If Sakara the Exemplary isn't the commander that you want to play, maybe try this one. I'll see you again soon.